and he began to think and he was hiding but then he opened up he said yes there's something she said what is it and he told he showed her the degree the decree that he issued that all the jews will be wiped out by tomorrow tomorrow morning she said have you gone out of your mind don't you know already that anybody who messes with the jewish people has no good end see what happened to Pharaoh. Oh, see what happened to haman see what happened to all the enemies of the jews they didn't have a good end you must retract this decree immediately in front of his mother he tore up the decree because of fear of what happened she went back to her pass her, her pal palace her castle and she told the jewish messengers what happened you can go back everything is great now these messengers when originally they were sent from the rabbis to go to the palace of the mother of the sultan they passed by the hotel room the hotel and the room where the Baal Shem Tov was staying with this wealthy German family and they heard him saying the words of the Hallel which is already towards the end of the Seder right it's at the end and they heard him saying in the Hallel which translates from the King David Psalm I think it's Psalm 138 or 139 to the one who does wonders alone Hashem alone Ki leolam chasdo, forever if is his loving kindness and he was saying it with a very emotional slow tune so the men they said to themselves if this Jew would have known what's transcribing now of the Jewish community he wouldn't be saying those words even right now so hours later when the messengers were rushing back to tell the the rabbis the leaders of the community what had transcribed they passed by again the hotel room of where the Baal Shem Tov was staying and they heard him saying the exact same words hours passed and he was still on the same words for the one who has made miracles all alone and they were amazed they still on the same words and he sang of a happier tune by the morning of Pesach the story of what happened that night was being spoken about in all the Jewish synagogues in Istanbul all the all the synagogues and word got out and people were making a lot of noise of what happened obviously not the real truth but the story with the mother of the Sultan and the dream and everything and they added that part that the Jewish that that that, that man who was singing the words of the Halan it was still in the same words so in the synagogue where the Baal Shem Tov was praying he also heard the people telling over the story what had happened the big miracle that had happened and he told his Reb Hirsch so far if it wasn't for that Jewish man who was saying the words <laughs> this whole miracle wouldn't have happened in the first place as if to say that he was the cause of this miracle fine on the first day of Cholomued when a person is permissible to travel if necessary especially in this case where the Baal Shem Tov was in a rush to do this big mitzvah of traveling to the Holy Land they immediately set off to find a ship going to the Holy Land and he told his daughter and Reb Hirsch I have an, alt, an option to present to you or we can travel by ship or I will pull out a carpet we place it on the sea and we all three of us focus the whole time on a certain specific holy what's called Yichud holy Kavana holy name of God in a specific combination and we will travel on the on the carpet on the sea and arrive at, at the shore of the Holy Land but it requires that we all focus together on this holy name without interruption and we will speedily make it to the shores of the Holy Land Odell said I'm ready my father if Hirsch hesitated I, I don't know if I can successfully focus the whole time on this holy name because it's a really difficult thing especially when traveling on a carpet a magic carpet on the on the sea so they didn't do that option they got on this on the ship and as soon as they went on the ship a tremendous storm took place especially in that area of the Dardanelles which is a very dangerous area anyone who's traveled by ship will know I doubt people know exactly but it was in, th in that time it was a very dangerous strait the strait of the Dardanelles is known to be very dangerous for the ships to, to pass through so there was a major storm and the storm would not stop it was getting worse and worse and worse and the ship was li literally about to sink so the Baal Shem Tov told his daughter and Rav Hirsch 
listen, all this is happening because of me. So, and because of what we have on this ship. So the option is like this from heaven. Or you, my daughter, Odell, lower yourself into the sea and the storm will abate. Or all of my writings, which are here with me, the Baal Shem Tov brought his, his Chidush Torah that he wrote. He brought them with him. And he said, or we take all of my writings and throw them into the sea. So Odell, she said without hesitating, Father, if it's a choice between me or your writings, I volunteer to go into the sea. He said, very well. And they started, they, they got a chain while the storm is happening. They lowered her with a chain along the edge of the ship. And she was about to enter into the sea and then let go of the chain. When she quickly summoned, the people were lowering her down by the chain to pull her back up immediately. They pulled her back up. This is not pleasant to lower somebody into the sea, obviously. They quickly pulled her back up. She told her father, quickly, throw all your writings into the sea. Why? Because I will bring forth a grandson. From me will come a grandson who will write to our insights much greater than these. So anyone who knows a bit of history will know that she is referring to her grandson being Rabbi Nachman of Breslov. Again, this is the Breslov version of the story. We continue. So the 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 storm abated, but due to the storm, the positioning of the boat was totally knocked off course, and they ended up being next to islands off the lower part of Turkey, of the country Turkey, and these islands were known to have people who were so dangerous they were cannibals. They ate human beings. They offered human beings as sacrifices. Rabbi Nachman himself, on his return trip from the Holy Land to, to back home, he also came to this area, but there were a different type of people, that any Jew that came into their hands, they would offer him as a sacrifice. But here, this case was cannibals eating human beings, whether Jew or not. So, the people after the storm, they came to this island not knowing where they were, not knowing that this was an island full of cannibals. And after such a terrible storm, everybody wanted to get off the ship to take a break, to have some fresh air, to calm down, to get new provisions. Everything was ruined in the, in the ship. So the Baal Shem Tov and his, and his son and, and his daughter and his, his, his disciple, Reb Hirsch, they went away from the other people on the ship to rest a little along the shore. And they were lying down resting. And all of a sudden, a group of cannibals came, tied them, tied their arms and legs, and prepared a pot, and started heating up with firewood the pot. And they're preparing to cut them up. They had knives, and to put their pieces of their flesh into the pot. And they were coming to slaughter them. They were approaching with the knife. So Verse started screaming to the Baal Shem Tov, Rabbeinu, do something, do something. And the Baal Shem Tov said, I forgot everything. I, have, I don't know anything right now. Maybe you know something. Say, I don't know anything. Do something. They're coming to kill us. But I don't know what to do. I lost everything. I lost my divine inspiration. I lost my faculty of prayer. I can't think of anything. My head is blank right now. Maybe you know something, anything. Reverse said, all I know right now is the Aleph base, the, uh, the Hebrew alphabet. So Baal Shem Tov said, good. Start saying the Aleph bet. I'll follow you. So Reverse said, Aleph. And the Baal Shem Tov said after him, Aleph. Baal Shem Tov said, Bet. Gimel, Gimel, and by the time reaching a few letters of Alephbet, the Baal Shem Tov was restored to his consciousness and his power to do supernatural things as a tzaddik of his caliber can do. And within a few moments, they heard galloping of horses. Police. Because not everyone were cannibals on this island. The police were coming, and the cannibals looked up. They, they just dropped everything, and they ran. And the police came, saw these people tied like that, they untied them, and they saw they were foreigners, they brought them back to the ship, they got back onto the ship. And as soon as everybody got onto the ship, and the ship sailed back, there was another storm, and this time the storm pushed the boat, the ship, all the way back to Istanbul. And this happened on the last day of Pesach, on the last day of Yom Tov, the eighth day of Yom Tov of Pesach in Chutzlaretz. And the Baal Shem Tov saw that from heaven he is not meant to 
come to the Holy Land and to meet the Holy Orachim HaKadosh. And this is the grounding of the custom to stay this over this story on the last day of Pesach. Thank you.